a woman in Germany Facebook messaged me saying, I love the Hollywood show Suicide Squad parody. I love you as the Joker. Can I get your face tattooed on my body? And I was like, <gasps> okay. <laughs> Do you have the picture of it? Yeah. Oh my God. In a world where two siblings create epic productions of monumental proportions. Wait, what is this, Hollywood? No, this is Hollywood. Oh, sorry. Please welcome the creators of The Hollywood Show and your hosts, Hilly and Hannah Hindi, as they discuss Hollywood and beyond. This is Beyond Hollywood. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Beyond Hollywood with Hilly and Hannah. Hello. Today on our podcast, we have a very, very special guest who is very well known in the Hollywood verse. You might know him as the Joker from our <gasps> ever popular Suicide Squad parody with almost 60 million views. He's also played Lord Voldemort in Harry Potter parody <laughs> and many, many more roles that we will go into. Everyone, please welcome the infamous Kane, Kane Keenan. Keenan. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I oh know. Gosh. So we haven't seen you um, in a while because of everything that's been going on in the world with the virus, but it is so good to see you and we really, really, truly miss you. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm making it, you know, day by day, just trucking along, staying focused and trying to be creative and inspired and active and safe all at the same time. You know, stay home when I stay home all the time, really, unless I'm out. <laughs> Luckily, I'm still able to teach at uh, the Dance Zone here in Las Vegas. Um, and uh, so besides teaching, I'm pretty much always at home. Or luckily, I also have a trainer that I get to work out with quite a bit as well. We need to start from the beginning with you. Okay. We need to start on how we met and what the first project that we worked on was all about. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I met Hannah first because she was a colleague of mine at the Dance Zone. I started teaching there in the fall of 2011 and um, just was sort of friendly with Hannah in passing because I don't think our schedules really overlap that much. And I was fairly new to Las Vegas and to the studio. Um, so I was just trying to get my bearings and you know get to know everyone as much as I could. And then uh, I believe it was in late February or early March of 2012 Dude, um, it was. Hannah, you got yeah. your dates down. I'm impressed. Hannah was like, hey, uh, do you want to be a part of this video we're doing? You look like this character from this movie that hasn't come out yet. So we don't really know if you <laughs> actually look like him. But here, can you make this costume and show up at this video shoot and learn this dance? And I was like, OK. <laughs> I didn't know. Like, literally, I had moved to Vegas with only the uh, certain aspirations of getting into a specific production company here. And other than that, I just tried everything as much as I could. And when Hannah asked, I said, yeah, of course. So I went to uh, Savers, I think, and found items <laughs> that looked like the costume. And the character I'm talking about, I don't even remember his name. He was the tribute from District 1 in the Hunger Games for the Hunger Games parody. But I, I don't do remember not... his name. I don't even remember the district. <laughs> I'm so oh, really? sorry. I am so impressed right now. I think you know more about Hollywood <laughs> than what. Than well, I know do. about I, I know about my participation. You guys have so many more actors and extras that have been in the shows. I just have to worry about me. For everyone listening, Kane is referring to the Hunger Games parody, which has now close to 13 million views. Crazy. <laughs> which is insane. And a little fun tidbit about the Hunger Games parody, we had to create that in 24 hours. A 24 hour period um, only. Because we were, a company was offering to sponsor us for that video, just for that video to see if they liked to work with us. Um, and they offered and we had very, very little time to get this together. We hadn't even seen the movie yet. We were basing it all off the trailer. But we knew we wanted dancers. And Hannah said there's an amazing dancer slash teacher that you should meet and his name is Kane. And I think he'd do wonderful. And I remember the first time I met Kane, we had a bit in the Hunger Games parody where he lifts me up in the air and everyone's circling and it's this big like Hollywoodish, you know, choreography. But my 
but is smack dab in <laughs> Kane's face. And I remember I was so shy because I was like, this dude doesn't even know me. <laughs> and this is a, wo- a warm welcoming. <laughs> hey, but we're dancers. We're used to that, aren't we, Kane? <laughs> yes. I was, I mean, it was just funny because literally our first time ever talking was when your tushy was in my face. So I was just like, oh, this is a person who's not going to be a friend of mine for forever because we're sort of bonded in this you know, weird, awkward situation of having Hilly's itty bitty bum in my face. <laughs> oh, thanks Aww. for saying itty bitty. <laughs> it, you better have said itty bitty, honey. <laughs> well, that was eight years ago, Hilly. So. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. <Next>. Kane. <laughs> I hate you. After we uh, had had that film shoot with what? Kane, yeah. we loved how professional he was. He was so, you know, reliable because you want to work with reliable people. I believe, Kane, correct me if I'm wrong, the next one we asked you for was the, the Hobbit, Hobbit parody? No. 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 <laughs> no. So which one was it? So you think you're a wizard. Are you yeah. sure? Yes. So you think you're a wizard? Yes. I promise. <laughs> I don't. I feel like it was the Hobbit parody. I thought it was too, but if he remembers it, I'm. Tr- it. It's what. It, I don't know. It's I whatever. trust Kane. I'm trusting the only reason, Kane right now. The only reason I remember is because we uh, won the award for funniest dance video on YouTube, and we went oh, to VidCon true. in 2013 to perform it live on stage. That's right. But I thought that was after the Hobbit parody. No, oh he's my right. God. Hold on. I'm gonna oh, I'm Google. Holding. I'm going to Google Hobbit parody because I don't believe you. I promise, Hilly. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? Kane's right. (laughs) You just told me how good of a memory I had and then you're trying to say that I'm wrong. And then she's all like, no, you don't have a good memory. Kane. (laughs) Okay, so let's recap. So you think you're a wizard. For those of you who have never seen the video, you definitely should check it out. It's a Hillywood classic and it's basically Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort doing an epic dancing duel that was extremely hard to learn choreography wise. <laughs> yes. But we had to choose Kane because he not only could get away with the slim figure of Lord Voldemort, but he is a kick ass dancer. Um, so let's get a little bit into how you felt dancing in those robes. I know when I was <laughs> when I was Harry Potter, I didn't really have that much trouble. Um, I think my glasses were like bobby pinned to the side of my wig to keep them stable. But I know for you, the sleeves was a big issue. <laughs> well, it was more the fact that I had on fingernails as well. So like the nails would get stuck to the fabric as we were doing all this choreography. And it was hip hop choreography from So You Think You Can Dance. So it definitely wasn't in my wheelhouse as a dancer, (laughs) but it was something that we definitely were able to do. I mean, if you look at like the behind the scenes of that, to go from day one of rehearsal where we just look like two like spaghetti monsters dancing (laughs) and then like to see the final product, like we actually look very similar to the original people who did that dance on So You Think You Can Dance. I was very proud of you too. Didn't they comment, the choreographers and even Nigel? Nigel commented on uh, it. They commented and they're like, we are so impressed. And Alex Wong. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alex Wong. Oh my God. I met Twitch uh, in the summer of 2014 because he was in town doing a nationals event for the dance awards. And I went up to him. I knew he would. I have no idea who I was. But I was like, I'm Lord Vault. And like, I didn't even finish my phrase. He's like, you're the dude from the video. And I was like, yeah. And his wife now, Allison Holker, is like a huge Harry Potter fan. So they had seen the video. They had shared it with all their friends. So they were really excited to meet me as Lord Voldemort in the flesh. That is so cool. You never yeah. told us that story. I think, oh, the, really? the hard, oh. I think the hardest aspect for you as a character in So I Think You're a Wizard was the fact that, you know, many people watch it and they don't think about the makeup and the costume, but you were in a full like skull cap and your face was had that also prosthetic it was over like your nose. Covered from my <laughs> upper lip to the back of my neck was all either skin cap or prosthesis. There is no escape for sweat. <laughs> And so it just slowly kept building up. And our makeup artist, Chris Dooley, who we love so much, he's worked on many Hollywood productions, had to keep touching Kane up. So all you're doing is building glue. And <laughs> the comment Kane said, 
um, in the behind the scenes was it's going to be Niagara Falls when this comes out. <laughs> because, <laughs> you, you know, I don't think fans think of little things like that. Mm-hmm. And we filmed it in the middle of July in the middle of Las Vegas. So I was in makeup, I think, from like four in the afternoon. And I think we finished filming like at two in the morning. So it had been sweat build up for, you know, 10 hours probably was at that, that point in time. that a one day shoot? Yeah. It was, that's what I was saying. It was a one day shoot. We filmed the stuff on the train platform in your house, in your living room. <laughs> With a white backdrop. Yes. <laughs> and the actual performance is on the is in church. Yeah, our, our church allowed us, which was crazy. <laughs> I just remember walking into the church and being like, "Are people going to think that like the devil's arriving to church this <laughs> evening?" Like dressed as trying to, like exercise. <laughs> yes. I mean, because my like my arms were painted like up to my biceps, and like my legs were painted up to like my thighs because you could see everything in those capes. But I wasn't wearing the cape to walk in, so it was just like. Lord Voldemort head and skin, but with like, you know, short bathing suit shorts and a tank top. Cause again, it's July in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm proud of us though. I'm proud of us for doing that choreography. I couldn't have done it without you. Okay, skipping forward, fast forward. Now fast we forward a few more months. on to, correct order this time, The, the Hobbit, Hobbit parody. <laughs> Kane is also Feely in The Hobbit parody. Now, is he, he Feely or Keely? Feely. Yes. I'm sorry. I get them confused. So do I. And (laughs) that was a crazy shoot because that was shot in 24 hours as well because we didn't have the budget back then to book long shoots. And Kane had to get up super early along with all of us to get all of our makeup on. And I think the dwarfs had it much worse worse than me. I just had little hobbit ears in my wig. I just had uh, hair. Like some characters had like full noses and foreheads and cheeks. I like I was lucky that mine was just facial hair. What do you That's remember true. about that shoot? What stands out the most um, for you? Anthony? Yes. <laughs> Anthony. Chris Dooley brought this guy with him. I think he played Bombor. And yeah, he's just like what? he's so big and just like this over-the-top personality, and he had this thick Boston accent. And I got to sit next to him for that entire filming, and I cried laughing so <laughs> much the entire time. He, he had a catchphrase and he would always say, potty super hot. <laughs> yes, potty super hot. I'm Anthony Julio and I like to potty super hot. I'm playing bomb boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was such an amazing character to have on that set because that was a super long day of filming. He made it funny. And I I mean, I remember that shoot specifically. I felt like I was just on a set with a bunch of young boys. So funny. I rem- one thing I remember we all laughed at was Anthony. We were, sh- we were, it was right when we were about to shoot and I heard the glass break. <laughs> yeah, had dr- because we told them the, the plates were like breakable and so were your glasses. So were the mugs. And we said, please be careful because they're not props. Like they're not like throwable. Like it was during a scene we were prepping. We were about to press record and we heard the glass break. I heard, and you hear, <gasps> like the gasp of me and Hilly. And of course, Anthony being the character that he is, you hear, you hear me. What was that? Because yeah. we all know what it was. I don't know. I think it was one of the apples. <laughs> <laughs> What broke? I don't know. I don't think it was a Care- bog. Care- I'm pretty Care- sure Care- it was one of the apples. Care- Care- <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> and so we couldn't good. even get mad at no, that No, it just like it was lightened so the clever. whole mood. It was so witty. And it was like, of course, it's one of the apples that shatters on the floor. <laughs> that a boy, Anthony. <laughs> oh, so funny. That shoot to me is very vague. I feel like I'm in a tunnel because it was like one room with mm-hmm. a sagging roof. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the roof was literally <laughs> at our heads. Yeah, we couldn't afford like a barrel ceiling. And I just remember Hannah kept telling everybody, we're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> one we're more shot, guys. Done. Just one more one shot. More shot. <laughs> just one more, just more shot, more guys. Shot. And it went on. God, how long were we there? Like Probably 19 not, hours? Yeah, I think it was 22 hours of filming. Oh my God. Filming. Because it was just take after take but after take. But this is back when Hollywood was, you know, we were just- One TV camera. Program. One, one cam- camera. We still have one camera. We still have one, but we didn't plan the shoots out as well as we do no, now. No, and 
we only could afford like one day of shooting and we, you know, it wasn't how it is now, how it's like we have professional catering. We have like seven to 10 days on set, but we were growing into ourselves as filmmakers and creators and learning as we went. And unfortunately (laughs) taking people like our lovely friend, Kane Keenan along with the ride. And he (laughs) had to experience all of our mistakes. You know what though? I think there was one before Hobbit. I think okay. I think President Gaga was before Hobbit. Oh my god. Because yeah. that was the year of the election, 2012. So like in like well, September or October we did President well, Gaga. For our for our listeners, Kane has more Hollywood knowledge than the actual creators. <laughs> If you ever have a question so, about Hollywood, ask Kane. Kane, what's your tech your number so fans can start texting you? I can give them my Venmo. Uh, it's 702. No, I'm just joking. I mean, I was I was literally on set for like 90 minutes. Like I didn't have any makeup. I showed up and was in one little itty bitty scene that you might not even catch, but Yes, if anyone's in the comments. Tell us where you think Kane is. I don't know. Should we leave that one for people in the comments? I think so. Let's I think we should leave it. Let's see the, the comments. comments. Find okay. Kane Find in President Kane Gaga. Find President Gaga. And leave a comment. Um, but of course, me and Kane are huge Gaga fans. I think that's how he heard of the Hollywood show. Was was it Jamie who showed you Gagaween? Yeah. Or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, I she looks like Gaga. Like, oh, she's so great. And that's how you got like in the know of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. What is next? After The Hobbit. After The Hobbit, what Breaking, came next? Breaking Dawn parody part two. Oh my oh god. Oh my gosh, Kane. I, I, and wow. Kane is nothing but a speck in the background, <laughs> freezing his booty off in the cold with wet shoes and wet socks. And what's cool about Breaking Dawn part two is that's where I first met Clayton. <gasps> oh my god. Because he and I were like way in the back of that Gognum style dance sequence. No, wait, Warm Bodies then was before. No. Kane? No. Yes. No. Huh? Yeah, well, the, the, <laughs> before we fangirl over Clayton, was there anything else that you remembered about Breaking Dawn Part 2 that I might have missed? Or was it a one day shoot for you and next project? Um, oh, I, I had remember to the wear van ride. Contacts. And that was oh. my first time I ever wore contacts. And like I just cried the entire day because I'd never put anything in my eyes before. But yeah, the van ride home took like seven hours for some reason because we had to keep stopping at people's homes to like drop people off or like I was with someone some random kid whose mom was driving the van and we had to stop at their house like it was I was literally I think I was with Clayton in that van and we were like what have we agreed to do just to get a ride home from this mountain (laughs) next production was it warm bodies yes it had to be Probably. Don't look at me like that. It had to be. <laughs> Probably. It had to be. Oh, my God. We need to have Clayton. Would you guys in the comments or our listeners, would you like to see Clayton on here to talk about our Warm Bodies parody? Yes. He played R. That would be fun. He dude. was amazing. I don't think we've ever really chatted about it with him. I don't think we have either. That would be fun. So Lovely Kane again came through and was a backup dancer in our airplane graveyard scene where we were all zombies. And it was the windiest day oh in <laughs> the entire world. <laughs> and I can't explain the wind. It was like literally being inside the Wizard of Oz twister. And it wasn't just wind, but because we're in this airplane graveyard, there's like shrapnel and dust and rocks <laughs> being blown as we're like trying to do this like Lady Gaga choreography. Even though we filmed in like May, it was so cold. <laughs> Cause we're out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. <laughs> it was the I think the worst wind I've ever had to deal with ever on a, on film, a film shoot. For sure. It was And when we left, got in the van, I had an itch on my ear and I had just sand all so inside gross. my ears. Hey, but it looked great. It's a, it's a, it I think looked it's, really good. <laughs> it's one of my most I think it's my most favorite. Uh, pieces of choreography. I like that one in too. the Hollywood show. I don't. I remember we choreographed that together, and I came up with a lot of it. Which, fun fact, Hannah does most of the choreography. I don't know what happened. I had an epiphany, and that was like my one, my one blue moon mm-hmm. time of fully 
choreographing something and I added flips and shit and I shouldn't have added any of that because <laughs> I about broke my neck learning how to flip. Everyone had to throw me over thousands of times and yeah, but we got it to look beautiful. It looked great. I love it so much. I want to watch it again. Let's all go watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's after that? Um, I was a random person in the Doctor Who parody. That's oh, right. Oh, no, you were a random person. You were the master. You were the master. <laughs> That's a character. But I didn't, I mean, I, you just saw me in the crowd dancing. Like, I wasn't at all, like, I didn't interact with you guys as your characters at all. And that was probably the easiest shoot ever, because literally, I didn't have to do anything except for wear a black hoodie. Like, I had nothing except for a black hoodie. But so. that night was a nightmare. Awful. Yeah. Hannah wow. had many a breakdown that night. <laughs> well, I only had, what was it, 35 people staring at me like it was my fault and none of it was my fault. And some people like literally stood there with their hands in their, with their head in their hands for 12 hours. Like that was their only part, like the angel statues. <laughs> <laughs> like they just had to stand there and do nothing. And there are those people on like those kitty cat faces that were like incredible, but that makep had to be awful to stand in. Taylor, for, a, Taylor was one of the cats, and she was sick, and she looked at me and she's like, "I have so much snot in this nose," <laughs> and I was sick too, and I had a fever that night. That whole night is a very it's a fever dream to me, and yeah. that's why Doctor Who is as beautiful as it is because it's a freaking fever dream. <laughs> anyway, but that night. I guess we didn't really tell our listeners, but that night, basically, we all had the crew there, which was three people back then. We had all shown up in costume ready to film. We went in and set up all the lighting for the stage performance for about four hours. I think it was two days prior to the film shoot. And when we showed up, someone had reset the entire yeah. computer system and all the lighting had disappeared. And I asked them, I said, well, they told us about it. They go, just so you know, the lighting changed. And I said that's okay, is everything saved in the computer? And they're like, yeah, everything's saved. But what they don't tell you is that <laughs> the lights are in a completely different grid. Yeah. There is missing lights. So we had spotlights and rotating lights that were no longer there. When we were watching, I go, okay, play, like, you know, it synced to the music. It was like yellow fade out. <laughs> yellow fade out and i said where are our strobes where are the rotating lights where's the blue flashes we did that whole freaking song that took us i think four hours and we had i think 15 minutes to pull something out of our butt and tell him flash those lights that looks good because we didn't put all this time and effort to have that okay so it may take a little while i need to know you guys are you okay with staying like i'm sorry i'm sorry I'm, so I'm like, I'm nervous. She started crying on me, and that means now I'm in charge. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was a I rough, lost, rough night. I lost my director. It's time to take over. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a breakdown. Everybody was like, "Well, I'm gonna have to leave," and yeah. I'm like, "You guys, like, this is a one day film shoot. Please, just for the sake of." All this Everyone, work. I think. Oh, anyway. I just, because I was a lot of those kids' teachers, I was like, they have school in 90 minutes. Like, their parents allowed them to be a part of this, thinking that they would get to go to school the next day. But they left at like 7.30 in the morning, still with full cat faces on. <laughs> so there was <laughs> no school happening that day. <sighs> yeah, so that's what I mean. Hollywood's a lot different now, because now that shoot would probably take four, four days. Probably. Oh, easy, four to five. Four to five. Now it's time to talk about the most popular parody that Kane Keenan has ever been involved in with it's, nearly it is, yeah. 60, I can't believe I'm saying this, with nearly 60 million views. It's crazy. We did a little video called Suicide Squad Parody. Just a little video. And I remember me and Hannah saw the movie in theaters and as we saw Jared Leto as the Joker, we said, damn, that looks like Kane. Yeah, you you leaned over and you're like, God, doesn't he look like but Kane? the difference was with this shoot, we were like, we need you for, I think, seven to eight days of commitment. And that, and Kane, <laughs> I think <laughs> like, at that wait, point. Wait, what? Kane, Not 22 hours? <laughs> Kane was working with the dance zone and he was also trying to get into Cirque du Soleil. At no, that I point. was were in the show. I had been in the show for three sure? years. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So he was already in Cirque du Soleil. He's a so very busy man. We, when we approached him with this, it was a huge commitment. And we work off of fan funds like Patreon.com. And Suicide Squad was the first production I believe Kane was associated in that was uh, put together by Patreons. Yes. Yes. So we were working off of Patreon funds at that point, And Kane did an amazing job at the Joker. And I loved being Harley Quinn with you, Mr. J. <laughs> so, Kane, tell us, how did you approach impersonating Jared Leto's Joker from Suicide Squad? Um, Hilly had sent me some videos to watch, like little short YouTube clips of just like mannerisms and the way he walked and whatnot. So I just, as a dancer, you you know, you know how to study people's bodies and the way that they move. Um, and so it was just that. And then like, once though I f- got into the whole costume and had all the makeup and tattoos and the wig mm-hmm. and, and the, those grills in, like you just like become, like it just helped me become the character so much more and like live inside of it. It's the same way that I get to do my characters in Cirque du Soleil. Like once you put the makeup on, you're there. And it's like the, you know, it helps you sort of personify that character. Um, it was so different than any other character I'd, I had ever played before. Cause usually I'm cast as like the sprightly young little, like, you know, high pitched voice, you know, little guy character. So to play something that was innately evil and so conniving and everything was just so, so fun. And like, just to sit there and like breathe and like, brood out of your eyes was just so exciting you know it was it was a different challenge for me to have to overcome and it's weird because I never looked at myself in the mirror and saw Jared Leto like I always saw myself just in the Joker makeup um and I think that's something that also helped it is I wasn't trying to be Jared Leto's version I was just trying to you know adopt some of the character cues that he had and then bring to life what I felt would make the video most successful. And you did a fantastic job. It was absolutely fantastic. So much fun. Again, really long days. Yes, there were seven days, but they were really long because sometimes they (laughs) included four hours of makeup at the beginning of the day. Um, But overall, it was just really fun. It was Hilly and I getting to portray these characters and listening to one of my favorite songs ever by another Lady Gaga song. Um, So, you know, it was cool. And... It was the first time I had been in a Hollywood show parody where I was the like one of the lead characters and there were all these extras around. Like usually if I was a lead, it was just me and Hilly. Um, so uh-huh. to be in front of those people like walking out the first time they like saw you in makeup, they're all like, oh, there he is. And someone in the, in the behind the scenes, you can hear someone say like, you look really cool. And then my high pitched little voice comes out. I'm like, thanks. Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks. you know, like. <laughs> Because I'm not like a, like a, a, what are those called? Um, those actors that always have to be in the character. Like I get in character the moment that someone says action, you know, like yeah, method. Right. I'm, I'm not method, you know, like I don't have to live in that unless I'm freezing cold, then I'm method. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just like I was my happy self until Hannah called action. And then I got to play this, you know, murderous villain. I felt the same as Harley is. It like she didn't come to life until I had it all on. And that's when I was able to look in the mirror, find her smile, find her persona. And it came very naturally once I was working with Kane. Right. Because then you could feel the dynamics and the chemistry of those characters and how uh, I don't I think like (laughs) I think what made it so wonderful was the fact that you two have known each other for years. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember Kane? Do you remember when we were filming on the highway, and you guys, the for those thinking Kane can drive a motorcycle, <laughs> we were on a whole rig. It was attached to the back of a car that was pulling us along while we actually had real motorcycle people behind us. We weren't in front of a green screen. Some people think we were. <laughs> no, we were doing it in real life. Um, and, <laughs> and freezing. We had to take a turn to go on to another stretch of road out in, this is in Searchlight, Las Vegas. And instead of Hannah and everyone else, you know, cause they don't know what it feels like to be on this rig to uh, say, hey, come on off of that, get in the car, put your seatbelts on <laughs> and let's go on this bumpy ass road to get another shot. They go, just leave Hilly and Kane on the rig. They'll be fine. 
I never said that. I think we just went. You guys just drove, and I was clinging onto Kane with my fingernails. And I was like, Kane, I'm going to fall. And I had lost Kane. Kane was in his own little world of being a frozen popsicle. He was not going to acknowledge me. He was just literally trying to survive. Well, because I was naked from the waist up. You were naked from the waist down. Like, together we were a fully naked body. Like, And there's nothing worse than being cold and then waiting. For for me, it was just <laughs> every every actor for himself at that point. And I was just clinging on, and we were going over bumps, and I was like, I'm, "This is how I'm gonna die." And neither <laughs> Hilly nor myself like are people who produce heat naturally, so it was just like two very cold bodies clinging to each other for dear life behind a minivan. <laughs> and it was the bumpiest road I've ever been on. I was like, I don't know how we're gonna make it. <laughs> But then we saw a goat. But then we saw a goat. We did see a billy goat. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to air this a little bit. But remember when Hannah jumped out of the car and landed <laughs> on Drew's glass? <laughs> I didn't mean I think to. that's the only time me and Kane laughed that whole shoot. That was the funniest thing. The best is I think at the end Drew. of the day, Drew was yeah. like, <laughs> Drew was like, has anyone seen my glasses? And Hannah looked at us like, don't say anything. <laughs> Does, and did he ever? Did watching, you ever tell him? When you're finally I, gonna find out? I swear what to God, he still glasses. doesn't know about it. Of course not. So okay, I have to go into it no. then. He'll he never. He still asks me. I wonder where those glasses went. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> me and Kim were parked on the rig again. We can't move. Hannah opens up the jeep, and a pair of sunglasses falls on the floor. And me and Kane are just sitting there watching this happen, and they fall on the floor. And Hannah just. Jumps out of the the jeep and looked like she had purposely jumped on top of the sunglasses and completely pulverized them. <laughs> and me and Kane started cracking up. And she was like, "Don't tell Drew." <laughs> and she just like slid them back in the car. In the I put them under the seat. <laughs> um, let's see what else happened in that shoot that I can remember. We oh. had we had impeccable timing with Suicide Squad parody, and that's how it always is with filmmaking. When you want to be warm, it's cold, and when you want to be cold, it's hot. Yes. And when we did the shoot with the acid bath, that was shot in, correct me if I'm wrong, November, Kane? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was shot in November, and everything was okay because we did the fire scene outdoors, you know, that big choreography, and that was maybe 60 was degrees a little chilly, Fahrenheit. 60 Fahrenheit. And by the but time everyone was fully filming, dressed. Everyone was fully yes. dressed, except for and you. not emerged in water. <laughs> and, yeah, and not in um, water. But the next week, we had a cold front move in, and I think we were around 39 Fahrenheit. We were, like, in the, you know, the 30s, and... There was this massive pool that Han and Drew had been filling up, and we oh, were I should trying, tell the story about we were that. We trying to heat it up, and it didn't really go over didn't well. Didn't quite work out. Tell them how we heated up on Hillywood sets. <laughs> tell them how professional we are. <laughs> well, uh, there <laughs> we. How do we heat up water on Hillywood we sets? We get turkey fryers. <laughs> big pots of turkey fryers and heat it up and we throw in the hot water and mix it around then take out some more and go heat up the next pot but we had like three pots going we kept trying to dump hot water in there because we were trying to do our best to heat up it was a massive pool another story about that is that night me and drew were filling it up we got it all out ready to go because we had to put a lot of uh, color in it and mixtures oh, and like yeah. milk bath bombs bath bombs we had used we had used <laughs> something else for the milky looking in it so we're filling it up we had to sleep at the studio because we couldn't let it overfill <laughs> so we're i'm sleeping in this office some random <laughs> office and all i hear is drew go hannah you gotta get up and i i knew that tone i'm like what's wrong the pool is leaking oh no so we rush in there there's water going out towards the cords where the lights were going to be set up I started grabbing anything and there was nothing in this studio. So I went to the batch of toilet paper oh. and I had toilet paper all around this pool <laughs> to try to get it stopped. There was no towels. There was no paper towels. There was no clothes. There was nothing. And we had to suck out all the water. So he had to go across town to get something to suck the water out. We had to patch it in the middle of the night, which we had to go to Walmart to glue and it back together. And then had to refill it. We refilled it. And that's why I apologize. It was that's so why cold. cold. Because we couldn't heat it overnight like we had planned. Because didn't he have like an actual heater? Like We a had heating heater. rods. Yeah, yeah. heating rods. And mm-hmm. then 
But because the pool was heated up by turkey fryers, we had like bits of turkey floating along in the pool that me and Kane kept finding. I think there was one turkey fryer he drew borrowed from someone and they had never cleaned it, it and there was no time to clean it. I was like, what what is, going. and I'd be pulling up like these fragments of like <laughs> pulverized turkey. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> and I was okay though. Like I wasn't nearly as cold as Kane and I don't know if it's, because I had experienced worse Hollywood shoots. <laughs> it was so awful. And it was another it was another film shoot where Hannah was like, guys, just one more shot. Guys, just one more shot. And I remember being like, if she says one more shot one more time, I'm gonna lose it. And I had already lost it at that point in time. And then and then so like we thought we were done and Hannah's like, okay, let's do the drone. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and um so the drone goes up and then not only is it freezing cold in the water, but then we have like this cold wind blowing down on us from above. I was like, this is a nightmare. And that shot, you know, <laughs> the drone's pulling away from us and you're hunched over me and you tilt your head back and give out like this epic Joker laugh. But as you were hunched over me, the noises you were making prior to that and even me, I was like, because I was shaking and you were like, Ugh. you were just, we were just grinding our teeth because of that stupid wind. But you would turn it on and you would get that shot because we were like, wrap it up. We were going to want to go home. Yes. I think also like being as upset or just like intensed by this, like the climate that we were having to work in made that like evil laugh and like that maniacal laugh come out so much easier because I was like, I am literally feeling this evil right like i would i not that i ever would but i felt like i could have killed someone in that moment because i was like <laughs> feeling the worst i'd ever felt and it was like 2 30 in the morning oh it was a rough yeah rough just tired time. cold it's late we had been in the water probably for like three hours did you have a when you were taking off the makeup did you struggle taking off those tattoos Yes. Because oh. <laughs> I did, but you had way more on your... Yes. I had them on my legs. You had them all on your chest. But I had them over airbrushing. So, like, I was... Because they changed my skin tone and everything. Like, I had that white marbled skin to be the Joker everywhere. So, in addition to scrubbing off these tattoos, there was the body paint all over me. And then I have my own tattoos. So, she had to, like, cover those and then cover me in the body paint and then put the tattoos on. So like at some parts of my body, I had like three layers of stuff on. Oh my gosh. So I Wayne. would be like, I would be in the shower for almost two hours every night, just scrubbing. And I would mm -hmm. get out and my roommate at the time, she would be like, no, you still have it on. <laughs> and I'd have to get back in the shower. <laughs> Cause like, I wouldn't see like the back, like there are certain scenes where you see my back and like I'm covered completely. So like to scrub all that off just took forever. Did you, in your wildest dreams, Kane, think that nearly 60 million people would see that video? No. I knew that when we were making it that it was really special. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just because, like, it was, like, the holiday time of year when we were making it or what was necessarily going on in my life at that time. Overall, I knew that what we had done was really cool and really one of a kind. So much went into the book like the production of it, like the sets that were being made and the extras that were on set all were really feeling a part of like this epic mini movie that we did. Cause the original mm -hmm. music video that we were parodying the Lady Gaga Judas music video is incredible. So then mm -hmm. to redo it with this new sort of culture that had come out with a movie that wasn't necessarily popular, but like the characters of Hit of Harley and Joker were super popular to take their roles and like capitalize on it was really awesome. Um, I remember when it was released, we didn't ex like we didn't know how people were going to react to it because it was kind of it was a few months after the movie had been released. Like it had been maybe right. four or six months. So <laughs> we didn't know. But I mean, it blew up. I think in two months it had 11 million views. And I and the only reason I, 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 I remember this is because it was my birthday and I was getting a tattoo. So I got this J tattoo for the Joker. I'm sure it's backwards, oh. but. I got that on my birthday um, to celebrate it. And then also a woman in Germany Facebook messaged me saying, I love the Hollywood show Suicide Squad parody. I love you as the Joker. Can I get your face tattooed on my body? And I was like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> so, I mean, I was like, I love tattoos. I love tattoo culture. I have ink myself. You know, like, this is incredible. So she was very kind. She goes, I want you to pick the image. Um, let me know what you think is the best. So I took one of our photos from, like, the behind the scenes and just sent it to her. Do you have a picture of yeah. it? Yes. Hang on one moment. I didn't know that. Oh, my God. And it's big. Oh like, it's probably the size of a dollar bill. And I don't really that know is where so it is. It's cool. probably on her arm, maybe. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And I can tell it's what? you. And I can tell it's, it's you. Weird. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, because my, like, the one big difference between, I think, Jared Leto and myself is, like, I have, like, a very skinny nose in comparison <laughs> to his. Um, so, I mean, he has amazing cheekbones, which I don't have either, but he just had, like, a wider face, which... Hannah always tried to make my face look whiter with makeup. And it just, when your nose is just so petite, you can't. <laughs> I do remember oh having, I remember I had to work on your nose a lot. Yeah. That was the one thing. But you have his eyes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know we have to wrap this up, but yes. I can't forget the scene that uh -oh. <laughs> I spoiled as an actress for my counterpart, Mr. Kane. It was the scene where you rescue Harley Quinn from her little jail cell. <laughs> And he was embracing me, and it's the actual last shot of the whole entire parody of him <laughs> saying, let's go home. And as we're doing it, we had had, it was Elliot Crossley. Yes, yes Elliot was, Crossley. You guys don't know Elliot Crossley. He has done so many voiceovers for us. He's done the Doctor Who voice. He's done Crowley um, from Crowley. Supernatural. He's done um, Pogo from the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> he's done so, I'm probably missing 10 more, but he's done so many voices and he mimicked Jared Leto for Kane Keenan. <laughs> because when I'm, in, when I'm embracing him, he had to, you know, we would have our little cute beep come in, beep for him to say his line and it would go boop. And you'd hear the Joker going, let's go home, you know, like all epic. And I heard, I can hear Kane in my ear silently mouth to it. And he, and he can't even speak because he has those grills and he's like, yeah. <laughs> I think like, I know how to lip sync, but for whatever reason, like that L-E-T apostrophe S was really hard to say without saying it out loud. You sounded like Sid the Sloth. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> and I ruined, I think, five takes with you. You were getting so <laughs> mad and I at felt her. <laughs> so unprofessional, and I was so upset at myself. And I was like, really, like, just be in the moment. You're Harley Quinn. He saved you from jail. Come on. And the second your mouth went, yes, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. It, it I took me out of it that quick. All I could see was <laughs> Kane looking totally epic. It's a tight shot. I see the little ponytails <laughs> like of Hilly, you know, and I just see you and you're I'm like, fix your eyes, fix your eyes, because we could talk because all the sound would be taken out yeah. later. So it didn't matter. That's I'm directing and Kane's like living. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, let's go. And all I see is like the ponytails just start wobbling. Vibrating. And I see Hillary. <laughs> like so mad. Stop it. <laughs> She's like, I can't. There were many takes where I was trying to be super serious and Hilly would just start laughing. The one on the operating table where like I had to like lean down into her face. Well, you were making noise. It was just you like trying to keep your slime in your mouth because <laughs> you were drooling on me. And so you're like, <laughs> 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 and I kept hearing you suck up your spit and I it's so funny it I'm and sorry I think Mr. J the true star of that entire parody aside from the tattoos because obviously tattoo placement was the number one thing but um, was the lamp in the operating room that we broke <laughs> it was like this vintage <laughs> lamp that was so beautiful and Drew was holding it so that it would stay in position but he wasn't he was holding the part that was like allowing it to like pivot spin so as I'm, I pulled it in and it was fine, but then you guys wanted me to like lean forward with it, but because <laughs> the base wasn't turning, the whole <laughs> thing just snapped. Down, 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 down. Oh. <laughs> well, there goes the light. I hold. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were trying to get this shot and we were like, oh no. We're like, I, lean in a little bit more, a I, little bit more, Kane, a little bit more, a little bit more. And you're like, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> And the funny thing was, after it snapped, we were like, well, good thing it's a tight shot 
that we have done all the wide stuff. Yeah. And we said, okay, Kane, just lean in. And it was so perfect <laughs> because of the fact that it had broke. Because Drew was, was at like that point most- was just like holding the like the pole that it was on so you could move anywhere with it. But that's when Kane really learned from us how much we had grown over the years when we were slowly saying nose to the yes. left. No, chin up. Okay, no, now down. Now lips, relax. Like... He, we had grown so much as creators since we had worked with Kane um, because that's when we had upped the camera. You know, mm-hmm. we had a whole new vision and we had learned so much in our little journey. But because he is Kane and because he's worked with us for many years and he respects us, he trusted us with every single, you know, direction we gave him. Yeah. It had to be perfect. And Kane did it flawlessly. So mm-hmm. thank you so much, Kane, for joining us on Beyond Hillywood. Kane, do you have anything to say to the fans who love you so much? Because there are many, many Hillywood fans that wanted you on this podcast that were very excited when we mentioned your name saying, would you guys want Kane Keenan? They were extremely excited. So is there anything you'd like to say to our lovely Hillywood fans? Um, Thank you for always supporting my two friends, Hannah and Hilly, in their creative endeavors. Mm -hmm. Um, It's truly a passion for theirs that I think you see come to life whenever you get to watch their videos and their creations. Um, But they truly do respect and are totally grateful to all the donations that they receive from their fans. So I think that's such an incredible part of the Hollywood empire. Um, And then also thank you for supporting like all of us that have been a part of any production because it is really fun. And I think you see that in the final products. Um, and then also just keep supporting Hollywood because I hope that they get to do so much more. I mean, there's another Joker movie coming out, so maybe we should do another Joker thing. Um, cause that would be a fun character to bring back. Um, but yeah, I just like, it's, I never thought I would be a part of this type of community. Um, but it was, you know, when I met you guys eight, over eight years ago, like it was just this friendship that you know, evolved from always having like a positive energy around us whenever we were together. And I think because of that, we've just always been able to make awesome art that people respect and enjoy and find really entertaining and come back and watch and share with their friends and talk about. I mean, the Suicide Squad's been out three and a half years now, almost 60 million views. Like, that's crazy. I think more people have seen the parody than saw the movie. So, (laughs) oh my God. (laughs) So thanks to our lovely Hollywood fans for helping that video get so many views. I don't know how you guys did it. Um, no we appreciate you so much. And if you guys don't know, we are on patreon.com slash Hollywood. We have a lovely community there of fans that support us monthly to help us create our next production that we hope to bring to you coming hopefully in 2021. Yeah, we hopefully. have to make sure the restrictions and everything are, you know, everyone's safe because safety is first. But in the meantime, we're going to have a lot more things coming out. We like to be involved with our Patreons from Zoom calls to everything else that's fun from Twitch streams now. That's something new. You know, the, the lockdown has given us this lovely episode with Kane Keenan, which we probably would have never had. <laughs> so thank you, Kane. We love you so much. Thank you for um, just being so amazing all the time. Thank we you. We love you. I love you guys, too. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Is this the end of Hillywood? Will Hilly and Hannah survive? Tune in next time to hear another episode of... Um, you're doing it again. Oh, sorry. Beyond Hillywood is listener supported. Join patreon.com slash Hillywood to contribute to help Hillywood live on. Oh.